Hello, dear students. Well, the aim of this video is to give you an overview of the structure that you can follow to describe a picture and also vocabulary which can be useful for you. So, let's start. Describing a photo is a good way of practicing general skills in English since you have to use clear, detailed language. The process goes from giving general information about what you see, moving to the specific parts, and finishing with your general impression about the photo. If we follow this outline, the steps would be Number one, give a summary of what you see. Number two, describe where the things are in the picture. Number three, include some details. Number four, speculate about what is and what is not in the picture. And number five, give your opinion about the photo. A couple of sentences for each section is fair enough. The best thing is to exemplify each step and have a look at different parts that you should follow. First step, how do I start? Well, I start with a summary and a general description of what is in the picture and what you can see. In a way, it is as if you were describing the picture for a blind person. Try to answer the following questions. Who, what, where, and when. Useful expressions to be used can be there is, there are, the picture shows, or in this picture you can see. Remember not to mix them, saying, for example, in this picture shows. An example of how to start a description of a picture can be. In this picture, you can see two men facing a mountain and surrounded by a beautiful natural landscape. Now, it is time for the second step. Start describing what things are. For that, there is useful language which you can use as expressions included in this slide. In the top left corner, on the left, in the bottom left corner, etc. Pictures, which are quite handy too, are in the background you can see or in the foreground you can see. Obviously, you do not need to include them all, but at least two or three sentences describing where things or people are placed in the photo. Let's practice with this picture. In the middle of the picture, there is a dog watching the sea. In the background, there are some blocks of flats and you can also see some people walking along the seashore. The third step is adding detail to your description. Avoid describing everything in the picture, yes, the most important details, and a good idea is try to answer these two questions. What do they look like and what are they doing? Again, let's exemplify this step. The two people both look irritated and angry. They are sitting on a bench in the park and they are arguing. The young man is staring down and holding his head in his hands while the woman is talking to him, using her hands too. To finish off, you should end your discussion by the last step that is speculating about the picture and giving your opinion. In a way, it is like talking about possibilities and I would dare to say that you can feel free and open your mind to imagination. Answering these questions may help you. Where? when and who took the picture, and why was it taken. Useful expressions for speculating are, I suppose, or models such as may, might, if you want to express possibility, or must for certainty. And finally, you could say why you like or you don't like the photo. Have a look at this picture, and here you have an example of how to speculate about it. Suppose it might be some kind of a street market. Maybe the stall owner hangs the knitted scarves on the street as a way of drawing people's attention while they are hanging around the market. Well, some last tips to make into account are When describing a photo, follow the steps in order not to leave anything behind. Remember to use the present continuous for describing what is happening in the picture. In this sense, the most common verbs are holding, lying, standing, sitting, etc. Use the scripted adjectives. For instance, in the last picture, you could say beautiful knitted scarves. Apart from the prepositions to describe location mentioned above, there are some more, such as next to, behind, in front of, opposite, over, above, or below. Verbs to speculate can be look or seem plus adjective, or look and seem, like, 
plus a noun or seeing plus to be and ing. Justify your speculation since it may seem as if you had learned them by heart, no matter what picture you have to describe. And finally, avoid long pauses like mm, mm. instead you could use these course fillers showing off some expressions in English. Some examples could be well, let's see, right. Okay, do you feel like describing this picture? Take a few minutes to have a look at it and check this example. The picture shows three smiling women preparing dinner in a backyard. They look happy while organizing the dishes. They are wearing casual clothes and the three of them are holding plates with delicious food. In the middle of the picture, there is a table with dishes of melon, bread and some sort of meat. On the right, there are also forks and knives. In the background, you can see some garden lights. I suppose they are preparing dinner or they might be preparing a birthday party. Perhaps the photographer is a friend of theirs. I really like this picture because it transmits happiness and joy. Well, I hope this video helps you whenever you have to describe a picture. These last slides summarize the main points of how to describe a photo. Have a look at them and pause them if you need to. Bueno, la teacher se despide y os espera en los próximos vídeos.